So today we're going to be doing a lifestyle edit using Fuji every day. And I'm going to go fast and I'm just going to edit like I would just normally edit something. And I'm just going to do kind of train of thought what I'm thinking. Um, and I'm going to edit as though I'm delivering to a client. If it was for like a magazine cover or a big ad or something, this would not be my final, final delivery on some of these images. I'd probably retouch them a little bit in Photoshop, but for 90% of clients out there, this would be, you know, pretty much a delivered set of images. Um, I'm going to be doing the three-step workflow, which all of you are probably familiar with by now, but if you're not, it's something that really sets us apart. We don't want you really messing with uh, hue, saturation, luminance, or too many controls. We've made it very simple by boiling it down to three things. You apply the film look, uh, then you adjust exposure as necessary. Often this is up because cameras like to protect highlights, so usually RAWs are a little bit underexposed. And then you need to adjust white balance and tint to dial in the global color. And these are things that no camera is going to get perfect, not until we have AI in cameras, which is probably only like, I don't know, a few months away, the way things are going at Apple. Um, I kid, but I don't kid. I kind of kid. I think it's going to happen. So you've watched it here first. I have a lot of thoughts, by the way, on the new, the new iPhone, but that could be a different video. Um, and yeah, so if you have any questions while I'm editing, I always love to answer community questions uh, or anyone watching. So just give me some questions and Casey will flag me down and I'll stop my, my editing to answer them. All right. Oops. Let me just hit random buttons. All right. So here is my set. I'll make it a little bigger so you can see. This is a lifestyle shoot that we did in Leavenworth to launch the Fuji everyday pack. So we, as a team, we go to different parts of the world and we do uh, we just basically it's kind of an excuse to have a really fun vacation with a lot of photography, but we also do a lot of um, testing and, you know, testing like film and digital to keep working on our formulas and then also to get images for launch. And this is a little shoot that we put together. Um, there were a little more there were more photos than 55, but we just kind of grabbed like kind of the center of the shoot so that we could get through it reasonably fast today. Um, Okay, so inside of the Fuji Everyday Original Pack, let me get kind of a more representative image here uh, so you can really see what's going on. Oh, maybe this one of Daryl. All right, Daryl Love, super cool guy. Um, he always plays Ness in Smash Brothers, and he will kick your ass. You can never win. You can play Super Smash Brothers with Daryl, but he cannot be Ness. That's just my little pro tip. So you will get crushed. Um, okay, where was I? Okay, Fuji Everyday Original. There are, I'm gonna do just a basic edit and then do the whole speed edit. So we've got three different looks in here. Uh, Fuji, let me just do, let's see, Fuji C200. I'm gonna increase the exposure and I'm going to uh, balance out the uh, green just a little bit and warm it up. Okay, there we go, boom. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'll duplicate it again. I'm going to show you the three looks. So we've got uh, C200, which is kind of a softer, like warm, kind of yellow centered look. Um, it comes from Fuji Color C200 film. It's, it's a really cool film for the right application. Uh, we've got Superior 400, and that has, I mean, as I as I rolled over it, so you can kind of see the difference. It really works with more of like red and orange colors and brings them out. Uh, the, the, the shadows get a little bit deeper. There's a little more contrast. You don't get those crushed highlights that you get with C200. Okay, so C200 is like mellow. Superior 400 is the more colorful version. Uh, both have super really just gorgeous deep color, but not overwhelming. It's very natural and it's like perfect for lifestyle photography. You know, we're not trying to like trick it out too much. You just want to have just like a nice clean look that looks like film. It's awesome. Okay. And uh, the last look is Acros, which is just a super duper amazing black and white film. Uh, I think it looks particularly good darker. So like, like kind of low, like uh, not high key, but like low key, like darker, moodier looks, looks really good. 
So these are the three looks in this pack. Um, here we go, little grid. I'll make it real big, and I promise, I swear to all the powers that be, I will do a speed edit. Um, but we've got gold 200 on the left, or I mean, uh, Fuji Color C200 on the left, Superior 400 in the middle, and Acros on the right. All really amazing Fuji films. If you ever want to shoot real film, which I highly encourage that you do, uh, this is these are three great films to start with, and they're all very inexpensive. Except, yeah, they're all inexpensive. I was going to say Acros is kind of expensive, but it's not really. So they're good films. All right. Ready? Ready to dive in? Speed edit? Let's go. If you have any questions, let me know. Let's do this thing, and it's going to be just fire. It's going to be crazy. Let's do it. All right. Bacon and eggs. Um, all right. So lifestyle shoot. We got to have a little... A little food, right? We didn't do too many food details, but whatever. Uh, I'm going to do C200. Increase the exposure. I noticed that everything, I mean, it was very underexposed. Uh, everything's kind of blue, so I'm going to warm it up. I'm going to work with the tint. We had no lighting, so this is about as good as this is going to get. Um, let's see, lens correction. Mm, I liked it without maybe play with the white balance but there you go that is before and after it's not the best photo in the world but you know we just need to have a little food in there um we're hanging out with the ukulele doing doing things that that people do uh this would be really nice with either um superior 400 and you could warm it up like that or uh, increase the exposure and work on the coloring like the the white balance um, again, we are in a orange cabin with yellow tungsten lights, so I would probably either do something like this if I did a big set inside, or I would do uh, Acros, and I would, and I think Acros looks better. All right, Daryl walking across the street. Let's do C two hundred. It's nice and um, very mellow. Got that nice orange glow. I love the uh, I love the somewhat crushed highlights of C two hundred. It's very very soft. Got Daryl outside. We're gonna do Superior four hundred. It's a little punchier, a little more colorful. Let's warm it up. All right, there. Skin tones all in the tint slider, my friends. Um, all right, so exposure, white balance, tint. A little bit blown out in the jacket here in the background so i'm going to go to either all soft i like the darker shadow so i'm going to just do highlight soft okay highlight soft um i can't abide by a crooked image it's just i just can't do it so let's do that see how these images look okay very similar we're just going to hit previous and we're going to hit previous um do i want his little foot in there probably I might let that actually be crooked. It looks kind of cool. This is such like a gap ad, or like J. Crew or something. Um, the color balance still looks good. Looks super good. Here's a little quick before and after too of what that looks like. But as you can see, like all almost yeah, all the highlight detail is preserved in the whole image. It's very nice and smooth. Really beautiful skin tones. Everything is accurate. There's nothing kind of like. There's no like kind of weird trendy look going on it's just super clean and nice where you could go to an art director and show them show them this color and they're going to be like fantastic we can put that in our magazine everyone's going to love it which is like the whole i mean at least for me that's the whole point is we are professionals this is like for people that want to really get into the upper level of photography okay so let's see i think see i'm going to do superior on this one too Let's just see. It might need to be a little more muted because they are in like, if you see from the beginning, they're in absolute shadow and in the lake. I mean, this is snow, so it's like super bright back here. So I'm not sure which one's going to work better on this one. So that's uh, superior. Maybe that with all soft. And that, that works okay. I still like the shadows being hard. So let me undo that and do just highlight soft. Yeah, that's better. And would C200 be better or? 
Yeah, I think Superior 400 looks best on that. All right. So since that was shot in kind of very similar, uh, you know, environment, I always just go previous. It's a really fast way to edit. Or if you had even more photos, you could go back to, um, you could go back to the grid view, edit one photo, and then select like the next three or four, and then hit um, sync settings, check all, and synchronize. And then you you know you get the next four or five photos um, to be dialed in, and that's like a super fast way to edit. If you don't use like sync settings, you're really missing out. I mean, I think it's one of the big powers of Lightroom is that you get you know if you're shooting if you're shooting a manual, which you should be, so your settings aren't all over the place. You can take advantage of sync settings and get through a shoot like in a second. You just edit one photo, select a bunch of other ones, hit sync settings, and you're done. So here is this photo. And, and they may not be perfect from photo to photo because they are facing a little bit differently in the light, but it's such a good starting point. Like if you get this one right, and these were shot right after, you only have to make like minimal adjustments. And for me, it's just like a little bit of exposure adjustment. Um, yeah, these still look good. I might wanna warm this one up just a little bit. We're still kind of cruising along on uh, Superior 400. I like the extra color in this situation. And let's keep going. This one just needed to come down in exposure. Um, I might warm this one up and add a little bit of magenta, just a tiny bit. I'm looking at Daryl's face here and he's getting some reflection from the orange jacket. So I'm, I'm keeping that in mind. And then Melissa, I'm trying to keep her skin tones right too. Um, a lot of people ask like, hey, I'm shooting, I'm, I'm editing a photo where we've got two really drastically different skin tones. Uh, you can get them both to be kind of dialed in perfectly. You really can. It really depends on the preset or film that you're shooting. But with Fuji every day, you can, you can get both skin tones dialed in pretty nicely uh, just by being careful with temperature and tint. Here is before and after. And I'm keeping them on the warmer side um, the entire picture because that fits the mood of the shoot it more realistically it would be like probably a, a white balance of about here but i'm choosing to, to keep it just a little bit higher because that's the cheerful mood of it all right let's go back into the forest we've got some lens flare on the lens meaning that the, the lens the light is hitting the lens at an angle and it's refracting inside the glass and we we're losing contrast um so let me see, what are we gonna do here? It doesn't really matter. I think C200 actually on that one. Uh, it's I know it's crushing the highlights a little bit, which seems counterintuitive to trying to bring back contrast, but I also don't wanna lose the highlights before I have a chance to um, kind of do global contrast adjustments. So I did C200, lowered the exposure. I'm gonna warm it up a little bit. We've got some color shifts because of the you know, the light bouncing around inside the lens. That's okay. I'm gonna look at the uh, snow. The snow is gonna be my indicator for overall skin tones. And I'm not looking at the skin. I have a whole nother video on this about skin tone and how it's how in a strange way, it's not about looking at the skin. It's about looking at neutral targets in the background. Um, you can check that out. It's a really good video, but basically I'm looking at the snow. It's kind of magenta. So I'm gonna slide this towards green. And now we have nice clean color. If I wanted to try to bring back the contrast in this image because of that lens flare, I could go to all hard. So if I, if I hover over all hard, you can see the contrast comes back in. And it's one of the best use cases for that tool. All of these tools come from the Fuji SP3000 scanner that we use to make all of our emulations. And this is a way of controlling contrast in your image that doesn't ruin the film look. A lot of people ask like, you know, how do you, you know, what should I do with contrast? Don't touch this stuff over here. Don't touch the contrast slider. It's not part of the workflow. You can do it all in the tone section, I promise. You know, try to solve it here. And then if you still can't solve it, okay, maybe go over here. But my recommendation is don't mess with it. All right, moving on. Let's just see if we can apply the last one. No, it's too much of a different scene. Let's start over. Let's do Superior 400. This is challenging light. There is just a hell of a lot of um, refraction happening here. Uh, looking at the snow, yeah, 
just not it's just not nice color i might just skip this photo or make it maybe black and white actually i know is that a cop out i don't know why can't it be black and white there's no reason it can't be let's do all hard yeah gosh i don't know i mean i could see this in in some kind of catalog like kind of faded like that with some text but it's just a difficult photo because this is like massive refraction or, you know, lens flare. So, okay, this is interesting. We've got actually a really cool lighting situation here. We've got some backlight. Um, there also the back of Angela's jacket is working as like a giant reflector into Kyle's face. So I don't know how this is going to work, but it's like if I had a, you know, an intern or someone or an assistant holding a giant flip and reflector right at his face, I probably wouldn't have it that bright, but just Angela standing there. So let's see what happens. Okay, C200 or let's do C200. We're gonna keep it a little more on the yellow, yellow and mellow side. There we go. I just came up with that. That's not how I want C200 to be remembered, but it's, it's kind of true though. Okay, so I applied C200. Um, I'm gonna straighten it. I can't stand that when it's not straight. I shot it. I should have had it straighter. Okay, um, adjust the temperature and tint. And it's about right. I would say if anything, they're maybe a little bit green. So I'm gonna just increase uh, the tint just a little bit. Uh, Kyle's face is like basically, you know, he's like looking at like a nuclear blast. It's so bright. So let's see if we can uh, drop that with all soft or highlight soft. Yeah, highlight soft's perfect. All right, cool. Before and after, super duper simple. Uh, here we are on a bridge, not the same lighting situation as this, although we can see if it, if it will match. No, it doesn't, it's just too different. But I mean, I always do that. I always just try sync, like it's so much faster. Um, we're gonna use the crushed, not crushed, but slightly flat highlights of C200 because we've got a white jacket on white snow. So I think that's a good base. And I'm going to warm it up. Um, and this is kind of a weird, I mean, it's strangely flat lights, lighting situation here. So I don't want to go any warmer than that. And Angela looks a little bit green, I guess. This is a tricky one. So yeah, I'm just going to go up just a little bit in um, tint towards magenta. Um, I'm going to bring the midtones down just by bringing all the exposure down. And then I'm going to bring up just the shadows a bit with Shadow Soft. Yeah, perfect. That is how you control contrast, in my opinion. That is like, that's a film way to control contrast. It's a little bit different way of thinking. Um, but once you get it, it's so much easier and consistent. So much more consistent um, than messing with the contrast slider on each photo. So I just looked at it, I went, it seems a little flat. I'm gonna bring all the exposure down just a little bit and then just bring up the shadows with Shadow Soft um, because it was kind of a tricky photo. But it looks so good now. And I just can repeat it with the next, you know, just by syncing. So that's a pretty fast way to edit, I think not messing with any of this other stuff. Like we don't need any other panel open. Just this top part. If you were working in Capture One, if I was doing the same speed edit, we actually made our own workspace there that comes with the product and you only have the tools that you need. So you're not even distracted by like anything else that you don't need. You can't even get lost, but that's not possible in Lightroom yet. Okay. Here we are, we're hanging in, this is my van. This is actually my van, uh, same pine cone. I love it. Uh, it's always falling apart, but I've done a pretty good job at restoring it, as you'll see as I edit. Um, I think the red is gonna look really good with, with Superior 400, because that kind of leans into red tones. So I'm gonna use Superior 400, increase the exposure. The overall image is way too cool. <clears throat> How do I know this? <coughs> Angela looks like she had like all the color sucked out of her face by a vampire. That's like how cold it is. <clears throat> so it's not correct. And also, um, it's just really cold. Like look at my tires, they're like blue. 
these are the little things I look at. So I'm going to increase the uh, temperature quite a bit. Um, everything's getting a little bit green. Again, I'm looking at Angela here. So I'm going to increase the um, magenta. And as I do, you can see, I mean, especially if I go in here, you can see all the colors like getting more clear and kind of unlocked and unblocked by getting tint just right. So I'm going to just increase tint just a little bit to about here. Now it's perfect. Um, feels like an infomercial. <laughs> Bam. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, that's about it. That's easy. Um, the van looks a little bit bent. Like if you took a hot dog and just kind of bent it back or like a loaf of bread. So I'm going to do lens correction on and it gets rid of that distortion, right? That's so much nicer, especially if you know that your van is not shaped like a hot dog uh, for it to look correct. And it just makes the photo look better. That, that tool is called the lens correction on tool, not the undo hot dog shape tool, but it, it gets rid of all of that bend in the lens when you're shooting wide open or with a wide lens and all the vignetting. There's not much vignetting uh, in this photo, but I do like to take the distortion out. And I think that's a very powerful thing to do to any photo you have is remove distortion. You can leave vignetting in if you want. That's a kind of a personal artistic choice, but I think distortion is always bad. It's going to make a blanket, a blanket statement about that. And that's because your lens will bend the photo, especially if it's a wide angle lens and you're not shooting perfectly level, it will start to really bend and warp and change. All right, enough of that. That's my TED talk on it. Um, let's just do previous. Okay, no. Different lighting situation. Let's start over. You know, sometimes sync settings work, sometimes it doesn't. I noticed right away in this photo, there is another lens flare. It's this little secret rainbow going through here. That means this photo lost a lot of contrast compared to this photo. Just because a little ray of light kind of went across the front of the lens. I didn't have a lens hood on. So we can fix that. Uh, we did, what did we do? Superior 400. How's the exposure? I, I think right here, whoops. I think right about here is good. The temperature and tint look about right. The main problem here is contrast. So we're just gonna go to all hard. Let's do shadow hard. There we go. And I'm gonna drop the exposure. Now that's about right. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep working with the temperature and tint sliders till I feel it's kind of dialed in. So there's before and after. Okay, this one, I can't get all the contrast I want back with just the tone profiles. And I just said, like, you should try to do it all here. And I did. Like, it's very close. This one, I would possibly go in and, and crank up the contrast just a little bit. Or maybe even texture. Just to kind of get that little bit of pop out of it. Um, we're going to do the lens correction on again because I know that my van is squarish. And, yeah, let's move on. Uh, I'm just going to guess that this lighting situation is closer to the first one without the lens flare. So I'm just going to go just jump directly from this photo to this photo and do previous. Do previous. There we go. Um, okay, maybe the exposure is a little different. Maybe that's all I got to do. Close. Maybe right, uh, right about here. Let me see. Yeah, I think that looks fine. Drop the exposure a bit, and I'm going to do shadow soft. I want to see the people in the van a little bit more. Um, what else can I do this photo? Lens correction on. Doesn't need it. Here's before and after. I think I might bring the exposure down again. As far as like what the perfect exposure is, it, it really, you know, there's kind of a zone, to be honest. Um, if I wanted a kind of a lighter high key, you know, expression of, of, of exposure in this, I would just crank up exposure more. I mean, it can work in this range too. This is by no means incorrect. Um, if I hit the J key, uh, nothing is showing as being blown out. 
except for maybe this little spot under here. But you could also, you know, I landed on about this for exposure. You could also, if you wanted to go a little bit darker, you could go down to like here. And all of those looks are fine, kind of within this range. I think that somewhere right in the middle looks the best for it. Let's see how that applies to the next photo. Flippin' looks awesome as hell. We're just gonna leave that. Uh, yeah, this is good. This is good stuff. Not, yeah, I am totally tooting my own horn. Oh, that's a JPEG. Okay, I don't know how that got in there. We're gonna, we're gonna remove that one. Uh, these are the ones I edited at the very beginning of Daryl, so I'm just gonna skip those. Here's one that I haven't edited. Um, yeah, I. Gosh, I really love Superior 400. I'm, I am kind of biased in that regard. All right, Daryl. He's smiling because he probably just crushed me like 15 times in a row with Ness. Okay, so we've got Angela out here in the forest. Um, we actually like heated up hot water and put it in her cup so that a little bit of smoke would come out. Maybe one of these you can see it, but I felt so proud of us for doing that. And I think we maybe added smoke to one of them. Oh, maybe not. Okay, you can't see it. Maybe we didn't put it in yet. Anyway, that's my blanket. Pretty cool, right? Uh, we just kind of styled on the spot. Um, all right. So let's do let's do C two hundred in here. Exposure looks pretty good. I'm gonna raise it. I mean, I just raised it just a tiny bit. Like I said in the very beginning, raw files are a little bit underexposed because your camera's trying to protect the highlights. So I usually go up a little bit on almost every photo, um, unless you've intentionally overexposed. And looking at her, looking at the background, the trees, everything, she's a little bit green. So I'm just gonna increase the magenta, just a tiny bit. Um, she's kind of tilting backward. So one thing you could do is go into transform and just do, um, let's see if auto would work, no, okay. This can't see what a tree is, but I can. So you can just go manually, go to vertical, and try to straighten it out just a little bit. You don't want to do it too much, or else she like gets a really giant head, um, <laughs> which you don't want. But just like a tiny bit actually just makes makes her look better. It makes the whole scene look better. Uh, be sure to hit Constrain Crop because you don't want those white little bits um, showing around the edges where you've tilted the plane of the photo. Uh, last but not least, I'm going to crop this to 4.3. Uh, that's because, you know, if this was ever a magazine cover, that would be the shape of it. That is the shape of a magazine cover. And whether it ever becomes a magazine cover or not, it just looks more professional and polished, I think, when you have a vertical that's 4.3 rather than um, your native 35 millimeter, like super tall frame. I, I can't stand that. Um, 35 millimeter looks amazing horizontal because that's kind of how we see as humans but when you turn it to a portrait orientation I like to chop that top part off by making it um, 4 3 right over here 4 3 so little tip all right Angela let's see if that previous one works on you yeah it looks so good um, oh wait I did I did transform her we don't we don't want that to carry through let me just remove that Okay, I am going very fast. Um, okay, next. That looks so good. Even the crop looks good. Maybe I'll go a little bit more magenta. Now, I'm going to do one more. Let me undo that. And this one I'm going to go back to uh, Superior 400 just so that we have a little more color colorful portrait of her. And you can kind of see the difference here um, when I go to survey mode. Boop. Okay, render. All right. So this is just like a little pit stop for a second. Uh, we got C200 on the left. You can see it's kind of got a little softer highlights. The yellows, uh, you know, kind of appear in the highlights and in the skin and just in general everywhere. It's nice and soft. The highlights are a little bit flat, which is just a great look. Um, and then on the right, it's a little more punchy. You can especially see it in her hands in this cup and the blanket and the highlights in her face, and even on her hat. They're, they're a little more punchy and there's more of a red orange undertone in the skin. 
and it's kind of a subtle well it depends on the photo it can be a very subtle difference or a more drastic difference but it's nice having the two options depending on the mood you want to go for so even her expression kind of fits the film that she's edited in so on the right it's a little poppier a little happier on the left it's a little more somber and uh kind of mellow All right, let's move on. Previous, it's your best friend. A little, uh, also a little pro tip, and this, this you know, video is not about this exactly, but it's just a tip I have. Is that whenever you're shooting a scene, a lot of people will will like set this whole thing up, like they'll set up Angela in here, and they've got an idea for the shot, and they do it, and they're like, awesome, got it, let's move. Let's like tear everything down, move. Let's do something completely different. Um, this photographer named Tanya Lippert taught me many years ago that you should try to get close, medium, and far out of every setup you have and maximize your time and maximize the model's energy. So having her sit in the same spot, you just get close, you go around the person, and you can get a lot of material from one setup in just like two minutes. And that is working effectively and efficient, efficiently on set. So, you know, I had a vision of like, this is the initial vision of I had her, I had of her in the forest. And then once she was set up, I was like, you know, the light is pretty nice in here. You know, here's what I want you to do. And I'm just going to kind of orbit around you and get this variety of looks and shots. And that's super helpful for your client. That's what they want. They don't, they don't need you to go from like here to here to here. They might be like, this is the vibe we want, but do you have something a little bit closer or like looking into the camera or looking down or smiling or more somber? And if you didn't like spend the time to kind of work that scene without kind of tearing down, you would, you would miss all these opportunities for photos that your client may buy from you or want for the magazine article or whatever. So just, that's just my tip is like really work a scene. Um, if you're a veteran magazine or editorial editorial photographer, you already know this. But if you're getting into it, it's really important to think beyond the one hero picture. You want to like expand that. So anyway, whatever. Okay. All right. Here is Daryl inside the cool cabin. He has got like his little uh, Hasselblad camera here, which is really cool camera. I find the focus is very difficult on Hasselblad lenses. Like the throw is really long, but they are really cool. I don't know. I'm talking about that. Um, too much knowledge about cameras. Okay. Superior 400. Um, I think, I think I would do that in here and just kind of play off the warm tones in the cabin. So Superior 400. <clears throat> Speaking of warm tones, it's a little too warm. And looking at the couch that he's sitting on, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of use that. And even the, uh, whatever you call this between the logs and the log cabin, I'm looking at those tones and actually in the blackness of his hair to get my final kind of color balance dialed in. So he's a little bit too green, a little bit too warm. I don't want to go so cool on temperature that his hair turns blue. All right. That's a, that's a really good indicator. You've gone too far. Um, or on a person with darker skin, if they start to turn blue, like anywhere, that's too cool. I, in my opinion, unless you're going for like, I don't know, some kind of cinematic look where it's super blue. I like a very true to color look. So, you know, a new neutral, timeless, natural look. Um, I would drop the temperature just before the point where his hair starts to go blue. And there you have good color. Uh, there's quite a bit of contrast here between the light and the shadow. If you don't want your image this contrasty, and it is a high contrast situation, you could just do all soft. And as I roll over that, you can see it just kind of mellows everything out. So all soft, and in fact, you could raise the exposure with a little bit of all soft and get, you know, slightly higher key look in a contrasty situation. Alternatively, Let's, let's do one more here. Alternatively, okay, here's Daryl again. Alternatively, you can just be like, I'm going to do black and white. This is a great candidate for that, especially with him looking into the light. I would do black and white here. 
I would fix the little crookedness in the background. There we go. And then I would go over here and just take a real simple uh, brush and I would either do, you know, up exposure up a little bit, maybe shadows up a little bit and go in here and just pop a little bit of, uh, you know, dodge a little bit of this so you can kind of see his camera. And I'm doing very, very simple dodging and burning. Um, there are giant tutorials about this on the internet. Uh, I think you can just keep it simple. Back in the day, dodging and burning was done in a dark room and they just did it with like your hands or like a little piece of paper with a hole in it. And, you know, those are the most famous photos of all time. We're still, you know, a lot of them were shot on film and done that way. So you can get as crazy and as complicated as you want with dodging and burning and more power to you. There's amazing tools. There's masks that you can use with your brushes, um, auto mask, whatever. I still find the simplest way is still really good. Just a little bit of exposure, maybe a little bit of shadow. Um, you know, I have my brushes up pretty high, but I just go in there kind of quick and dirty and, you know, bring things out that I want to see. And then I just hit the option button and unpaint or unburn, undodge if you start to get halos. And that's how I do really quick dodging and burning for kind of an initial uh, deliverable to my client. It looks good. I think, it look, I think it looks good. I mean, you could get like super nitpicky about it. And I would if it was like going in a museum or like I'm selling a huge print or it's a magazine cover, then yes, I'm going to go totally nuts getting my dodging perfect. But when you're delivering a big gallery, my tip to you is just keep it simple and keep moving. Your time is worth a lot of money. All right, Daryl, here we go. Um, I've got a gold reflector on the right here, so he is a little bit warmer than on the other photos, so I can bring down the temperature a little bit. That is like true to life, beautiful, superior foreigner color. This would be C200, it's a little more mellow, and it's just a different vibe. I kind of think of like superior 400 is like happy vibe, and C200 is like you know, you're listening to Lana Del Rey and it's like raining outside, right? Is that a vibe? <clears throat> I don't know. Like, I'm a little bit sad. I'm, I'm going to write some poetry or I'm going to add a quote to my Instagram photo, whatever. That's kind of how I think of it. But man, Superior 400, I don't know. It's, it's just my favorite. Let's move on. Okay, still got, I don't know, 20 more photos. You guys still interested, still watching? Yeah. Yeah, you know you're addicted. You love watching people edit. Okay, uh, this photo is super underexposed, so we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know, shoot, let's try C200 this time. I can't even see the photo, it's so underexposed. I'm gonna raise the exposure up. Um, things that are really underexposed tend to go green when you bring them back up. It's just a sensor thing. And it seems to be the same with almost every camera, except the GFX, the new miracle camera, doesn't seem to matter how you shoot it. It could be 9,000 stops underexposed, but for us mere mortals, it will go green. So you have to offset that with tint usually just a little bit. Okay. Yes, that is good. I like it so much. Does it need anything? Yeah, little lens correction. It's nice, it kind of flattens it out a little bit. We got our before and after. Um, I might bring down the exposure a bit actually. And I could flatten it out with all soft just a little bit. That looks good. You know what? I'm going to add grain to this one. So there's a little 35 millimeter grain. And we'll call that one good. That looks good. Whoops. Totally looks like kind of a 90s like gap ad, but like 90, 90s meets, I don't know, now a little bit. What do I know? Okay. That looks cool. I can't stand this little line on the side, so I'm just gonna crop in a little bit. Uh, this like, looks like she's got like a pool cue sticking out of her. Let's get rid of that with the uh, brush. See if I can do it in one clean stroke. Uh, let's see how that looks. Eh, there's a little bit of weirdness right there. Let's see, oh, no, I don't want that. Let me fix this real quick.
Boop. Come on. Let's just find a nice area where it blends. Okay, wasn't that crazy? I took something that's not even related to this area, but sometimes that blends even better. Um, it just needs like some kind of pattern that isn't, I don't know, it doesn't have any pattern in it. It's just like there's nothing there. So that, that looks okay. I mean, this would be a job for Photoshop. The um, healing tools are so amazing that it would like reconstruct her hair right here, but that's just kind of a quick and dirty job with what I have in this. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to increase the tint towards magenta a little bit. I'm just looking at Angela's skin tone. I wanna keep it really nice. Um, that looks good. All right, is that pool cue in this one? Yes. Is it gonna cover it? No, because it wasn't in the same spot. Let's see if I can get that out. It's actually a uh, handle of a shovel. This is where we buried the body. A kid. Um, we were throwing axes though. There we go. And there's this little thing. I don't like that. Uh, that looks good. All right, let's move on. Here's another one. I'm just going to go back and then back again because I don't want to keep grabbing that like um, healing brush. Oh, shoot. All right, way different exposure. It's a good opportunity to switch over to, what were we using on this one, C200? Let's do the other one, C200. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna go now over to, to um, Superior 400, boom. Looks so good. I love, I don't know, I love having everything in focus. <laughs> Call me weird. Um, see how this works in 4.3? Okay, I'm gonna eat my words just a little bit here, maybe. I really love the top of this um, shed, this little detail. So I'm, I'm not going to crop it that way. In fact, my only regret with this shot is I didn't move back further so that I could crop it 4.3 and keep the top of the shed in. But if I have to choose, I wanna keep it all in there. So the only thing I might do for a crop on this is just come in, because there's this kind of little edge of a tree here and it looks really sloppy. And I'm just gonna kind of come in like that. Um, that, is, that is just a nice shot. Don't even have to do anything. That's superior 400. All right. All right, Melissa, let's see. Are you a superior girl or a Fuji color C200? What works with your skin? I think superior. So I'm gonna raise the exposure a little bit. We've we've got, it's kind of a really interesting lighting situation here. Her hat is like a black hole. I mean, it's like a black felt hat. So no light comes off of it. Um, it provides a little bit of shade for the top of her head, but we've got, I think some reflector coming in from underneath and we're shooting at F 1.2. So it's just really kind of a wild situation here. It's probably a lot of vignetting. Um, and she has very pale skin. So I applied Superior 400, increase the exposure a little bit. I'm gonna increase the temperature a little bit and a little bit of magenta, right to about mm, here. Okay, and now because it is shot so wide open, I wanna play with a few things. So let's see what happens with lens correction on. Like, look at the amount of vignetting because it shot at 1.2. It's like a different picture. It's kind of like, what do you like more? I kind of like it burned in on the sides, um, but I don't like that distortion. So I'm gonna show you another little trick. I'm gonna do lens correction on, because it gets it flattens the image out. It just is more flattering to your face to not be kind of bulging out because um, a lot of lenses, even this 50 will have some distortion. So I don't want that. So I got rid of that, but I can go back down into, um, let's see, where is it? Is it detail? No. Uh, is it effects? Yeah, no. Oh yeah, lens corrections. Duh. Okay. So I just a little side trick here is we did lens correction on. You can go into the lens correction panel and and remove the vignetting correction or adjust it. So I I like the distortion being corrected but I liked some of that vignetting too. I didn't like all of it. I think that was too much, but I don't want it off. 
So I'm just going to take this slider and go like halfway down, or maybe maybe almost all the way down, and that is perfect. So there, there's before and after. I could also do all hard or all soft to kind of play with it a little bit more, but I don't want her face, like if I do any more hardness to the highlights, um, it's just too much. There's like a spotlight on her face. I don't want that. Uh, do I want to soften the shadows? Mm. Yeah, no, I like it. I think just how it is is perfect. Okay, I spent a little bit too long on that photo, but I wanted to show you some stuff. All right, can we apply it to the next one? Yes, maybe a little more magenta on this one, just a tiny bit. Yeah, it looks good. Here's before and after. I don't like this little cross beam. Let's get rid of it with 4.3. That's a stronger photo. All right, next. Let's see if we can just keep going. Um, okay, she's getting a little bit too bright on the side, so let's do um, highlight soft. That's good. Maybe bring it down just a little bit and warm it up. That looks really nice. Before and after. If I'm going too fast for you, just let me know. I am here also to answer questions. Let's remove that crop. That looks really good too. All right. Moving on. All right, back to Daryl. Uh, let's see. Let's do C two hundred. He he looks like he looks like he's listening to Lana Del Rey. <laughs> He'll kill me for that. Um, okay, exposure down. Tint up just a little bit. Uh, how's the temperature? Too cool? Too warm? His jacket starts to turn blue if I go any lower, and I know it's not blue. And he's got this like kind of warm tungsten light. So I'm going to kind of play with that and keep it a little bit warmer. Um, I can't stand the keystoning in this. So I'm going to go down to the transform panel and hit auto. No, I'm going to hit full. I'm going to just do it manually. Fine. Um, another way you can do it is go to this little honeycomb thing. Grab this. Hit that. Find some, some lines that you believe to be straight and just start making it work. And do I have any more? Do I have any more lines left? One more line. The third line, so this is one, two, three. Not that one, Not that one. this one. Get rid of that line, boom. Oh, that is better. Okay. You know, we're gonna correct this as much as we can. Um, and you can find all these tools in the transform panel. It's one of my favorite parts of Lightroom. Do a little vertical correction. That's about as good as we're gonna get, my friends. Um, let's do a crop. Do I wanna keep that little light in there or not? That looks good, N nice and clean. All right, Daryl, there you go. Is that nice? Isn't that nice, like clean, smooth color? It, uh, I mean, you could add like 35 millimeter grain and. Just call it a day. It looks really good. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me get rid of this thing. It's very distracting. All right, there we go. Oh, okay. I want to do it perfectly. Boop. All right. We're going to call this a medium fast edit. Um, all right, here's this drunk bear that we found in Leavenworth. Um, let's see. It's a happy moment. Let's do superior 400. Increase the exposure or uh, temperature a little bit. The exposure, maybe just a tiny bit. Um, we'll do. Let's just do. I don't know. I kind of like it punchy. Let me see. No, I'm gonna do all soft. Uh, we're gonna crop a little bit. I don't like this little bit of a car. Let's see, can we get rid of that without losing or without hurting the boot? Yeah, we can get rid of it. There we go. And again, we can go down to transform and see if we can make it a little bit nicer. There we go. Good. Uh, these cups, should they stay or should they go? They should probably go. I know, that would be my instinct. Especially if, like, if this was for stock, for example, like stock photography, they would, I'm 100% sure they'd be like, you need to remove those cups. So let's just anticipate their needs. 
Let's see how that looks. And it's okay. I mean, it's not the best, you know, heal, but it's not the worst. Um, but it's fast, right? And unless uh, unless they hate that, that's good because your time is worth a lot of money. Okay, wandering the city. Let's do C two hundred now. Or how about Acros? Eh, I think I think they're easier to read this way. So C two hundred, drop the exposure. They're very green. Let's get rid of the green. Warm it up a little bit. The highlights are blown out, so let's do highlight soft. And let's straighten this. Crop it. Oh yeah. And just to make it a little more high end, like get that that nicer uh, four three crop. I don't know. I'm sure there's someone out there that's like that's a very terrible idea to do four three crop, but just go to like a magazine rack. Look at the shape of the magazine. It it really does have an influence on how you see photos. All right, got Will here um, doing his blue steel look. Um, it's a good photo. Let's see, what's gonna look nice on him? I think we're gonna do C200, no, we're gonna do Acros, yes. That's what we're gonna do. There we go. Okay, Acros. Um, I like the highlights not popping too much. Maybe we'll just make the shadows a little bit deeper. No, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it. Okay, we're just gonna crop down to 4.3. Uh, maybe a little bit up, maybe maybe a, maybe a little this, a little that. See too far over that side. There we go. Found it. Let's do that. Add a little bit of grain. Looks super good. Um, Angela, do you get the same treatment? Yeah, it looks so good. All right, we're in we're in uh, black and white portrait mode. I'm gonna put that little like rule of third thing like right on her eye and see how that works. It looks super cool. Um, I love the toning in her face and in the background and on the jacket. I do wish I could see her hair a little bit better. I don't wanna make it look fake though. Um, so let's see if we can do shadow soft. That's pretty good. And that looks really nice. Okay, easy. Um, in fact, I'm gonna do that and drop the exposure just a little bit and add grain. That looks pretty nice, looks really nice. Okay, uh, I would probably go into Photoshop and take some of the little linty things off her hat, but for a first deliverable, that's a nice portrait. All right, so what do you do in Leavenworth? You eat giant pretzels that are like literally the size of your face, like bigger, and they're so good with all these like spicy sauces, garlic sauces, whatever. Um, I found that, again, Superior 400 looks really good on food inside. If you're, if you're trying to lean into that warm editorial kind of food look that is kind of popular right now, but it's a little bit retro, um, Superior 400 just seems to do it. So it looks really good. I don't think it needs any kind of tone profile. Maybe Highlight Soft, maybe. I kind of I kind of dig these, these uh, a little bit brighter highlights, but if you hit the J key, you can see that none of them are blown out. So there's all that detail there. So if you go to print, there's detail all through here. There is a tone. It's not like pure white. So easy peasy. Um, this could benefit uh, also from a crop. Oh, come on. Let's do it. Four, three. And uh, there was a little light meter down here in the photo, and we're just going to crop that out and whatever those things are. There we go, that's a nice clean photo. That's art. <laughs> all right, all right, cool. We've got some leading lines here pointing towards Melissa. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna actually, let's see. I'm gonna go for C200. Um, decrease the exposure just a little bit. She's like super duper duper green and warm. So let's fix that. I'm looking for nice, neutral, beautiful color. And I'm looking actually down here, right? At the bricks and her feet and her legs. And if I get that right, the rest kind of falls into place. 
This is the kind of photo you want to make sure it's like absolutely symmetrical. You know, you've committed to this really cool pattern in the background. So you want to make sure that you, you try to get that just dialed. I'm going to do previous. Um, might need a little crop here. I wish she was more in the middle. That's my bad. And increase the exposure just a little bit. Here's before and after, so you can kind of see what's going on with C200. Okay, we're almost done, my friends. Uh, we've got our album cover in, this, in the city of Leavenworth. Uh, let's see. We're going to go for C200 because, again, we're kind of going for that, that moodier feeling. We're going to add a little bit of magenta and drop the exposure just a tiny bit. And we're going to correct that. There we go. All right, so we got Daryl here. This just is meant to be black and white. Gonna increase the exposure. And the light here is just so fantastic that I just don't think it really needs much. Like it's just kind of perfect how it is. And then for our last few photos, should we do color or black and white? Um, let's do black and white. They look good. Do shadow soft. Kind of bring out the jacket. And there we go. That is it. That is like everything for the entire session. Um, it is a lot of photos. Let me go through them real slow for you. So we got our, our beginning photos of the day. Um, you know, a little bit of indoor activity, walking around, some lifestyle, you know, shots out in the snow. We've managed to control the highlights and shadows throughout the whole thing. Um, different lighting conditions and the photos look good. And this is like, a, would be a really nice set to deliver to, you know, a clothing company or whatever. It's just really, really nice. Um, good portraits, good variety, 55 photos total, but this would be enough for like a small lookbook or something like that. Um, I hope you've really enjoyed this. We've, we, we did it all with the Fuji Everyday Pack. It's a very versatile pack. Um, if you have any questions about what we've done in this video, please leave a comment. We'll get back to you. You can also reach us directly at m.me forward slash Mastin Labs, and we will answer your questions directly. If you're not already part of our Facebook community, please join it. Just search Mass and Labs Community on Facebook, where you can drop in your raw files to be edited by our community members to see how Mass and Labs will look on your photos. So you know if you want it, know if you like it, and figure out which pack is right for you. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe for more great videos. We've got new stuff coming out every week. Uh, but until next time, I hope you have a great day and happy editing.